distinguished guests, faculty, family, and friends, and almost doctors. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce your students here. Dima Tigger. I really don't think I could properly introduce a man like Dima Tigger. He's like Doogie Hauser, meets Chuck Norris, meets Disney's Aladdin, <laughs> meets David Beckham, meets Screech from Saved by the Bell. He's a chameleon that can blend in any crowd, and yet somehow stand out in that same crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, don't just call him a future doctor. He's a world-class athlete, a hip-hop connoisseur, a style icon. When you see him on the basketball court, you would swear he's the second coming of John Stockton the way he dishes out those assists. His Bay Area roots give him a distinct outlook on hip-hop music, and I'm forever privileged to be mentored by this man. Nima's style and sophistication is also second to none. I think Hugo Boss or Armani will be making scrubs or white coats soon, and we'll call it the Tahiri tradition. This man even had his uh, car valet parked and bottle service at our med prom this year. Before coming to Keck School of Medicine, Nima graduated from UCLA with a degree in political science and was a member of the Sigma Pi Beta fraternity, the only Persian fraternity in the world. Nima, <laughs> Nima actually invited me to one of these parties, and he told me, and I quote, we're going to dress up, no T's left undotted, no I's left uncrossed. <laughs> Nima will complete his residency in internal medicine at LA County USC, and will become undoubtedly a spectacular doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who once told me that sharks have dedicated a whole week to him, the man who used to sit in the Medi Norris Medical Library to, quote, listen to Gaga, learn about the spine, and order groceries on bonds.com, my good friend and your student speaker, Dima Tigger. Thank you, Andy, for that gracious introduction. I think I should have had you write my personal statement instead of that guy I found on Craigslist. <laughs> I can't tell you all how honored I am to be standing here for this momentous occasion to address the Keck School of Medicine class of 2013. This isn't my first time at the Shrine. Actually, the last time I was here, it was for the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards <laughs> in support of major recording artist Taylor Swift. <laughs> Needless to say, I've come a long way since then. I'd like to take this time to welcome our friends, our family, and our loan officers <laughs> for coming out to congratulate and support us in this very special time. This is for you, Wells Fargo. You have been more instrumental than you know in getting us to where we are today. Because honestly, without you in our lives, we might have ended up at USC Law School instead. <laughs> Thank you to our honorable faculty. For helping us unlearn everything we picked up watching House, Grey's Anatomy, and my least favorite, Scrubs. <laughs> I'd like to also thank the Trojan family for accepting a former Bruin like myself into the household. Hold on. I remember the first time I met Dean Pugliapito at his home. Don't worry, there are other people there too. I told him, I did my undergraduate studies at UCLA, you know, just introducing myself, and he shook my hand and he said, that's okay, son. You're home now. <laughs> Lastly, before I begin, if anyone is live tweeting this event, please use the hashtag I can't believe this guy's gonna be a doctor. Lowercase no space. <laughs> now, the most frequently asked question I've gotten from my friends and family looking for a date has been do any of your attendings look like McDreamy and or McSteamy? My answer? Wait till you meet Dr. Snow. It's the man sitting in 
flew over here. I don't think he saw that one coming. <laughs> However, the second most common question I get is, what exactly have you been learning in medical school? And to make them lose all confidence in the medical profession, I look at them with a straight face and ask if they've ever played the game Operation. <laughs> It's a lot like that. <laughs> but as I began writing my speech, I reflected back on my four years at Keck. So let's start from the very beginning. Year one, when we went from drinking from the fire hose of knowledge at the lecture hall, to drinking from the open bar at Met Prom, which as many of my peers may recall, led to the paramedics being dispatched to the dance floor. Year two, we continued to learn how to work as a team during anatomy lab, and we learned how to be awkward as a team during the general exam workshops. <laughs> which also happens to be the title of the first chapter of my autobiography, <laughs> soon to be on Amazon.com. We were taught survival techniques to prepare for man-made disasters, like you know, step one. And many of us made it out okay while others were put on psychiatric holds. But once it was all over, we bid farewell to the classroom and began doing what we really came here for, to rock the white coat and scrubs. And then post it on Facebook. <laughs> During third year orientation, we were told that we could no longer webcast our medical education. This came to a big blow to me, personally, living in Westwood. But now that we were told we must physically show up to the hospital, because apparently, the good people at Apple have yet to figure out how to deliver a baby with the iPad Mini. <laughs> Speaking of babies, let's start the third year by discussing the OB-GYN rotation. Will security please restrain Dr. Arias before I begin? <laughs> Here we learn that a baby is only one of many surprises that come out during birth. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't put that in the movie Knocked Up. <laughs> Thankfully though, my classmate, spiritual guru and confidant, David Cohen, warned me about this beforehand, giving me time to get my hazmat gear together before <laughs> setting foot in labor and delivery. <laughs> Don't forget to put on your boots, guys. <laughs> During surgery, we channeled our inner Steven Spielberg while driving the laparoscopic camera in preparation for a Sundance Film Festival. We learned how to retract like a pro, and most importantly, we learned how to take an emotional beating from a scrub tech while not crying on the sterile field. <laughs> no one wants Dr. Anawa mad at them. Speaking of emotional battery, during psychiatry, we discovered that the 5150 is not a tax form, but rather a mandatory three-day all-inclusive vacation in Ward 2E. Which, by the way, has been getting great reviews on Yelp for their Haldol cocktails. I believe we also have some available with the refreshments after the ceremony. So just yell out code green psych ER a couple times, and someone will come out to help you. On pediatrics, we realized that the phrase gone viral. It's only a good thing when you're talking about YouTube. <laughs> and after the third time catching a child porn virus, you're perfectly justified under the common law to steal some lollipops and stickers for yourself. <laughs> it's like stealing candy from a baby. <laughs> Literally. During internal medicine, we learned to read chest x-rays, how to interpret EKGs, and how to calculate the loading dose of Seattle's best coffee necessary to get you through three sets of rounds. <laughs> and lastly, 
During family medicine, my first love, we learned the concept of a normal 9 to 5 day. Something most of us will sadly never experience again. And before we knew it, fourth year came around and it was time to choose our specialties. But that's when I realized medical school is a lot like high school. In orthopedics, you have the jocks trading war stories and class fractures and dislocations that they produced on their own. In OB you have your ex cheerleaders that used to spell team at football games, not spelling push <laughs> in eternity sweet. In radiology, you have your World of Warcraft gamers that are still playing the game. <laughs> now in the radiology reading room. And of course, your babysitters club graduates going into pediatrics. The list goes on, but the take home message here is that no matter what personality disorder you may have, <laughs> you've got a medical specialty for you. <laughs> Clearly, we learned a lot of unconventional wisdom, clinical pearls, training and counting. All jokes aside, these past four years have truly humbled me. And I'm honored and proud to have worked with such brilliant people. One of my attendings once advised me not to let my future training beat the humanity out of me. Of course, at the time, I was half asleep and couldn't really comprehend anything. But once I bolstered myself with an ID Red Bull, I knew that these words would stick with me for the rest of my life. As my Instagram follower and CrossFit partner, the Dalai Lama, once said, <laughs> Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. While our goal is to diagnose and treat disease, we cannot successfully bring healing without first being empathetic and compassionate toward our patients. Dr. House might disagree, but then again, his show is now cancelled. <laughs> so to the class of 2013, I wish you all the best in residency and in life. It's truly been a pleasure training alongside each and every one of you. As we move on to new hospitals, new cities, and post our furniture on Craigslist, remember, only meet in a public place, and never accept bills over $20. <laughs> Our experiences at County will always keep us together. So when you're in your residency saving lives while reciting well-written internal monologue like Zach Braff, don't be shy to tell everyone in your new institutions that you went to USC. But if you get caught not washing your hands and spreading drug-resistant bacteria to your unsuspecting patients, that's a good time to tell everyone you went to UCLA. <laughs> Sorry guys. I didn't mean it. Thank you very much. <laughs>